I guess the most relevant place for me to start would probably be high school. I felt like my childhood for the most part felt normal-ish. My parents were divorced, but I still didn't really feel like anything too traumatic or crazy happened. I mean, we weren't really rich, we weren't really poor, we were pretty much, I would assume, middle class. I never really had to like worry about if I was gonna eat or when my next meal would come so I don't think too too much from my childhood affected what ended up happening but you never know I'm in therapy so I might find out some things later on but in high school for sure that's definitely the one area that I can like pinpoint when things started to change most significantly in my senior year so in my senior year of high school um i was actually one of the captains of the dance line that i was on so i had been on dance line throughout the entire time i was in high school and then on my senior year now that i'm a captain you would have thought that i would have probably been working even harder and doing even more but it's interesting i actually ended up becoming less active i think because the focus was less on me as an individual and more on me having to make sure the rest of the girls were good, coordinating with the other captain, coordinating with the coach, just like all the nitty gritty details because of that, me physically, I ended up suffering because I wasn't doing the daily drills anymore. I wasn't participating in all of the practice because I was too busy like watching everybody else. And because that was like at that time, my only source of physical activity that just didn't really do me any favors. Then also during my senior year, that's also the year that I got my driver's license and I got my first car. So my first car, that came with a lot of freedom and that's definitely where things started to take a turn for me. I had access to a car, I also had access to a little bit of money. So those two things combined, for some reason I decided to go the fast food route. All of a sudden, you know, I had been in school my entire life but now that I have a car, the cafeteria food isn't good enough for me. I quit eating lunch with my peers. I quit, you know, having that systematic, somewhat balanced diet. And basically, since I was a senior, I was able to leave school half a day. I only had to go for the first half of the day and then I was able to go. So I would get in my car and I would go get fast food. McDonald's, Sonic, Wendy's, Taco Bell, just whatever I was in the mood for. That started becoming like my main source of nutrition. I remember like, I don't know, back in high school, I think my mom like at the beginning of the week, she would probably give me like 20 bucks and then the first couple days I would blow it on fast food. And then once like towards the end of the week, once the money started getting really low, I would take like my last few dollars and I would go to the store and I would like stock up on Hot Pockets and pizza rolls and chicken fingers, just like little frozen snack foods. So even though I wasn't eating fast food, I still was trying to get the equivalent to it at home. And I mean, at the time, I didn't really think much of it. I definitely didn't think that that was gonna birth this whole addiction and pattern that I would still be living with today. But I don't really know why I decided to go that route. You know, for some kids, they end up getting into drugs, into alcohol, into partying, like hanging out with a bunch of friends just to help them like deal with things, I guess. But for me, I definitely just turn to food. So this pattern pretty much continued for the entirety of my senior year. Me eating so much more in excess also mixed in with me not being as physically active. Of course, it's just a recipe for weight gains. I know a lot of y'all have probably heard of the freshman 15, but what I like to say that I went through was actually not a freshman 15, it was a senior 60. I gained 60 pounds during my senior year of high school. And even after high school, even after I graduated, that just continued to escalate. So now we're in college. I entered college at the age of 17, but like not even a month later, I turned 18. And I vividly remember on my 18th birthday, um, going into one of the stalls in the bathroom of the student union and bawling my eyes out. 
word had gotten back to me that there was a group of um, students that were my alumni. We went to the same high school together. And basically once they saw me back on campus at the local college, um, they were all so shocked at how much weight I had gained. And it just got back to me like that they had had a whole conversation about how I had just let myself go. And uh, that was just devastating to me because by that point, I obviously knew that I was gaining weight and I was having issues but the fact that other people were finally starting to like see it too that was just uh, that was definitely a big hit to my self-esteem so in college I pretty much continued the same cycle fast food frozen food just not making the smartest choices and it's interesting because I stayed home during college I never lived like in the dorms or anything so I was still living with my mom having access to the food she was cooking every day but I literally would just refuse it and I would rather fend for myself and eat at McDonald's or just eat a hot pocket or something. So my weight steadily throughout this time was increasing. I think I probably came into college around like 150 pounds and by the time I left college I was 250 pounds. So I gained 100 pounds within those four years. And I like remember so vividly whenever I was like approaching 200. I remember I was like around 195, 198. I was just around like the 190s for a long, long time. And I remember telling my mom like as soon as I hit 200, that was just gonna be the thing that was gonna force me to get my stuff together, get my act together. That's gonna be the thing that's gonna send me in the other direction and I'm just gonna become this, I don't know, athlete and start eating well and stuff and I remember I remember my mom saying that like you know what if you don't get control of it now before you know it you'll hit 200 pounds and <laughs> literally a few months down the line you'll find yourself at 220 and you'll still be climbing and i just i refuse to believe that i was like no that's not gonna be me i'm gonna get control of it once i hit 200 and literally exactly what she said happened before i knew it i hit 200 i was at 220 which turned into 230 240 250 it just continued to like escalate so during this time when i was in college i did try to do something about it at first, it was just all about like the fitness aspect. I knew I wasn't really being active anymore. I wasn't doing anything, you know, to combat the stuff that I was eating. So I started trying to go to the gym. Um, we had a local gym on campus called The Rack and The Rack would host like several different programs and whatnot. So I remember probably around my sophomore year, I started doing this thing called The Running Club, which was a program we would basically show up a couple times out of the week for an hour and there would be a trainer and we would basically just do different variations of running around the campus and I definitely remember hating it but for some reason I kept on going back and doing it over and over again and then I kind of moved from running club to this thing called boot camp which essentially it was the same thing but instead of us running outside we would stay inside and do like different full body workouts throughout the week not only that I would walk on campus I would go to the rack just to be on the elliptical for like an hour. I would go to the rack to take like other classes, yoga, spin class. So I really didn't have an issue with being active in college but the crazy thing is I would turn around and immediately sabotage myself because I would go and do these workouts and then I would leave campus and and go to Raising Cane's and just like binge and eat so much in excess that it was just like what was the point of working out in the first place? It just felt like this constant fight against myself and at the time it's like I knew that's not what I was supposed to be doing but I just chose not to acknowledge it and of course even though I was working out the scale was continuously still going up okay so I'm about to be late filming this video but I just felt compelled to share that I was like let me get this shit on camera because this is so disgusting and I should be like embarrassed I am embarrassed look at my passenger seat and I have more in the back like literally look like there's a Wendy's bag Sonic bag McDonald's bag McDonald's cup Kane's cup more McDonald's cup Dairy Queen Canes, Canes, McDonald's, like, 
and then just bottles and wrappers like this is just so gross and so unhealthy and like this is like my life like i think this is like a week's worth and it's gross and i need to like seriously make a change so after a while of that, I did eventually start trying to go the whole dieting route. I would just go on YouTube and I would type in like how to lose weight, how to lose weight fast. Just try to find like something quick and easy to do. And guys, when I say I tried everything, I tried a lot. Keto, calorie counting, basically starving myself, paleo, low carb, no sugar, just every little gimmicky thing you could possibly think of. I remember there was this thing going around, it was called the 10 day green smoothie challenge. Ugh, and it just brings back chills thinking about it. Basically for 10 days straight, you would drink these green smoothies it was different like variations every single day and that's all you would have for the 10 days it was no whole food no solid food you would just rely on the juices and for me the smoothies were absolutely disgusting and so what ended up happening is for about the first two to three days of doing it i would down the smoothies however i can i remember i would have to like plug my nose just so i wouldn't taste it and eventually i would just stop drinking them at all and not only would i do that but i just completely stopped eating i looked at it like okay well i can't continue to drink these smoothies but at least i can just not eat anything so that's gonna force me to lose weight too and that just started this very very terrible cycle of just me assuming that complete restriction and starving myself was going to be the key to weight loss and i remember this one time it worked like i went the entire 10 days starved myself for about eight of those days and i lost about 20 pounds within that time and you know what i was so proud of it because to me i i had accomplished something even though i went about it very unhealthily even though my heart was literally making these crazy like fluttering feelings because i knew it was just so weak i still looked in the mirror and i saw it as a good thing because i liked the way i looked And of course, I eventually ended up gaining all of that weight and then some. I kept on continuing to just going from diet to diet after that, trying to find the diet that I hated the most the least so that I could do it enough for a long enough amount of time so that I could lose the weight. Honestly, I just remember hating all of the diets because all of them were super restricting and it just felt like the only way you're gonna lose weight is if you eat fruits and vegetables 90% of the day and for somebody who honestly just really didn't care for them, that was hard for me. So I looked at it as it had to be this hard, long drawn out process. And I think that's where a lot of my good food versus bad food mentality really started to pick up. I just, from then on, saw foods as black and white. I saw these are the healthy foods that apparently are gonna make me lose weight, but I literally hate eating them, so these are the good foods. And then here on the other side, these are all the foods that I actually enjoy that are technically, I guess, considered bad because they just make me gain weight. And that's how I saw them. No gray area, nothing in between. <sighs> okay, so um, today it is January 31st. 2016 I just weighed myself and I'm 241 pounds I just look at this oh have I showed y'all my new additions to my family can you see them these are all fairly new body probably forever so it's March 7th and I'm pretty pissed off right now because I ripped my dance the same pants that were fitting fine and actually almost a little too big five months ago Now you might be like, oh, why is she overreacting? But that split will go all the way around the leg. And look, I look like fat as f 
I'm out of breath and I'm just <sighs> pissed off. So towards the end of my college journey, that's kind of where I felt like enough was enough and I started trying to look for other ways to help me help myself. I remember I went on YouTube and I saw this girl, she was making these weigh-in videos. That was like her way of documenting her weight loss journey and I just remember thinking that was so cool. So I decided to go ahead and try to do it myself. At the time, I had one more semester of school left and I I decided to challenge myself to lose I think like 60 pounds within that semester. Fit to Graduation was born, that was the name of my channel, and it was basically just a way to keep myself accountable. Hi everyone, my name is Jessen and welcome to my channel. So basically I am on a weight loss journey and I have decided to document it and um, recorded on YouTube. I started filming weigh-in videos in my bedroom. I literally didn't have a camera or anything. I would just film it on my phone. I would go around the entire house and try to find a bunch of random objects to stack on top of each other just to make a tripod. And I very, very slowly started to find my own little audience. And it was interesting because at the time, the girl that I saw, that was the only person I knew who was doing this. So I didn't think that it was that big of a thing but once I joined it was literally like this it was cool it was like this whole community of people that were doing the exact same thing as me so towards like the beginning of 2017 it was probably about 15 of us that started out and we would all just make our videos and we would comment on each other's videos to encourage each other and it was just nice it was a cool little secretive thing that I was doing because nobody in my personal life knew about it it was almost like I was living this double life online posting about my weight loss journey but yeah it was really really nice that I was able to find that community one of these people um, I actually ended up finding out lived pretty close to me we were only about an hour away from each other and we quickly grew a friendship online and that turned into texting which turned into talking and eventually meeting up in person and little did I know how big of an impact um, this person would end up having one me for years to come. You know, I, I debated for a while whether or not I wanted to bring Megan up in this documentary, but Honestly, when it all boils down to it, I, I didn't see how I could not bring her up when she had such a big part and impact in my life for the last several years. I fell very quickly, um, and of course in the beginning it's that happy puppy love type of stage. Everything just seems to be amazing and going great. Um, at this time, I came out to my family and some of their initial reactions were very hurtful. So much like in general was just going on around this time. My stepdad was dying of cancer. We ended up losing our house. I came out to my family. I was still like right at the end of my senior year. So I was just trying to graduate. I was starting to have some health issues of my own. At the time, my weight was literally skyrocketing. I just felt so out of control and I just started going through this whole like downward spiral. I quit my job of almost three years completely on a whim. I just got frustrated and pissed off and left. No notice, nothing, just left. And I again, I turned to food as my kryptonite and the amount of food that I was consuming continuously just kept increasing. And you know, before 2020, I, I definitely would have considered that like my lowest, my lowest point so far. So fast forward, we're now in post-graduation. To make a long story short, yes, I did end up graduating. Graduating from Laudy with a Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice, Justin LaBombe. Woo! Welcome, Justin! 
I completely failed my challenge of trying to lose 60 pounds. I literally, I didn't even lose any weight at all. In fact, I actually think I gained five pounds. I ended up moving out and moving in with my girlfriend. And that relationship, although it started off completely amazing, it just eventually ended up turning toxic and the best way i can explain it is that it was like we were two individuals trying to do life together but literally going in two completely opposite directions and now i know that you can't take two people who both don't love themselves enough like i don't love myself and she doesn't love herself and expect us to come together and our love for each other is gonna make up for the hatred that we have for ourselves individually if that makes sense it just doesn't work like that and you know for a long time i refused to let it go it was me i can definitely say that it was me trying to just keep hold of this person because in my mind i didn't want to start over i felt like my self-worth was just who is she i i had no self-worth I put all of my worth and my happiness into a person and even though that person was no longer making me happy, I took it as, you know, I, I gotta get what I can get and I can't, I can't let this person go and that just ended up in the end causing so much extra heartbreak and turmoil that was just completely unnecessary. So after college, just within that first year alone, I ended up gaining about 35 pounds. My weight was just absolutely out of control and I was stuck in between the same cycle of yo-yo dieting, followed up with severe binge eating, this all or nothing mentality, seeing foods as black and white, like no in between at all. I did eventually move out of my ex's house and I got my own apartment so that way I could self-sabotage myself in the comfort of my own home. And I'm talking like McDonald's for breakfast, Taco Bell for lunch, Cane's for dinner, Cold Stone for dessert. Seriously, just completely out of control. And I reached my heaviest weight, my heaviest ever recorded weight of 293 pounds around like mid 2018. I at that point was just completely disgusted with myself. I avoided public interaction just because I was embarrassed and I felt shame because of like how much weight I had put on. So one day, I remember it was late at night and I was sitting on the couch. It was late October 2018 and I was scrolling on my phone and I came across this girl. It was a before and after picture and something about it, it just like intrigued me so much. So I clicked on it and it brought me to her page and basically I think at that point she had lost over 100 pounds um, following WW. And at the time I had no idea what WW was and even once I found out that that was was Weight Watchers, I still didn't really know much about Weight Watchers. Like, of course, I had heard about it before. Weight Watchers has been around like forever, but I didn't even like understand what exactly it was, if it was a program, if it was a food brand, didn't understand. So long story short, I looked at her page and I remember seeing her posting like food that actually looked good, like pizza and tacos and like casseroles, like things that I actually, I was like, you know what? I could eat this because before, it just seemed like everybody lost weight only by eating like boiled chicken and brown rice and like broccoli <laughs> which just wasn't my vibe so me seeing this it was just like all of a sudden this new world I completely just instantly like got a sense of hope and I'm like you know what if she can do it I can do it because this looks like something I could actually stick to the very next day I went to the WW studio that was local to me I signed up and I immediately started seeing results 
it was crazy it was just like this complete 180 mental switch all of a sudden i lost almost eight pounds my first week so just that alone was enough to keep me going and then within five weeks i lost 20 pounds within four months i lost 50 pounds and overall i ended up losing about 73 pounds in 10 months so it definitely worked and you know what even though the weight loss was amazing what really stuck out to me more was how strong i was mentally like i just felt so on top of it like it took me years to get to this point it took me so long to find something that worked for me and i finally found this program that works and it's teaching me that you don't have to restrict yourself all the way like you can have things that you love in moderation it just felt like i was just i, I finally found it and then not only was I personally doing so much better, now all of a sudden this YouTube channel that I created a couple years back just to help me with accountability, now that's skyrocketing and ooh, I'm able to monetize it. That's another source of income that I never thought I would be able to do, which I think that also contributed to me having self-worth issues down the line because it appeared like not many people were very interested in me until I started to lose weight. Then all of a sudden people started coming by the masses but that whole period of me being on WW and succeeding and doing well I just remember it felt like I was on cloud nine but as quickly as I went up I came back crashing down I went to a wedding in Chicago around September of 2019 and you know at that point I had already lost over 70 pounds I was feeling good and I was like you know what I'm gonna go I'm gonna treat myself I'm gonna enjoy myself I'm not gonna track anything I'm just gonna live my best life for these next couple of days because I deserved it that's how I felt so I went there and I did just that I enjoyed everything I ate exactly what I wanted I ended up eating in excess because I guess I don't know it's crazy like old habits die hard but to me that was okay because that's what I had intended on doing the problem came whenever I came back home and I had originally planned to immediately get back on track and I couldn't it was so hard for me to regain any sense of control it just felt like a drug addict like oh look I've been clean for 10 months but literally the second I get a taste of like that old life and how that used to feel and these foods that I used to just feel no kind of self-control with as soon as I got a taste of that I I couldn't let it go and I couldn't regain a sense of control anymore I quickly just started going down a slippery slope I started going the opposite way on the scale continuously gaining weight and you know for me at that point me failing a diet wasn't anything new because I had already failed like 99% of everything else I had already tried but this time around this time because I had had so much success because it was a, a, a 10 month long stretch of success and because I had an audience watching me and I mean I made a big deal about it like everybody knew I had lost this weight now that I'm failing and I'm gaining it all back and I'm just doing what I said I would never ever do again it was just straight up embarrassing I kept trying to do my best and continuously make videos and be honest so that I could you know be relatable and whatnot but really like deep down I think that entire time I really just refused to actually acknowledge what was going on in the back of my mind even though I was self-sabotaging myself I still felt like at some point you know I was gonna regain control it's absolutely bizarre to me that I was able to have this complete 180 mentality switch towards the good and then now just like plummeting in the other direction and then on top of that I'm having people tell me that you know we really don't want to watch you anymore and you're not inspiring anymore like you're literally a disappointment to watch and I'm like on the other end of that screen internalizing every single comment because you know as much as I would want to be upset most of them were things that I had already told myself from that event in September of 2019 throughout all of 2020 now here in January of 2021 I'm still trying to regain control so now we're here current time and this is usually the part of the video where people tell you how 
they got it together they got their life together they ended up going back in the right direction and they lived happily ever after and everything ended up working out but this is my real life guys and it's not happening for me in that super hyper speed that people are only interested in viewing my journey is still going my book is still being written and right now I may not have all the answers and I may not know what the future holds, but what I can tell you is that I'm trying. I'm trying, I really am. So a couple of days ago on Christmas day, I actually mentioned to a family member that I had this idea to do a documentary and I was basically just gonna kinda explain my life and journey up until this current point. And I was just kinda casually mentioning it, trying to, you know, get some feedback to see maybe some things I should or shouldn't add or what they thought about it. And the response I got was truly like one of the worst things that I've ever been told. Basically yesterday on Christmas day, I briefly brought up the documentary to a family member. They immediately told me that it was a bad idea, it was a terrible idea and that I shouldn't do it. And I was honestly caught off guard because I wasn't really expecting to be shut down. I was more so just looking for some kind of helpful advice. And when I asked why, they basically said because I gained all my weight back. So what's the point? My audience doesn't want to see that. Like nobody cares about your story unless there's some kind of positive outcome. Like, what's the silver lining? Like, who are you doing this for? What's the point? And I was just so stunned because I wasn't prepared to have to defend my idea. And this person is very close to me. So just to have them tear down something that I was excited for. And I know, I guess, technically that's my fault for even allowing somebody into my vision but I just couldn't believe what I was hearing because basically how it was coming out to me was that right now where you're at right now you're not good enough your story is not worth being told you don't have a great before and after like you don't have an amazing story so until then then you make your story then like you you wait until you lose all the weight then you come back and make your story but right now you ain't got nothing to say like as if i didn't already feel like my self-worth was in the toilet thank you so much for letting me know what you think of me and where i where i currently stand you know i internalized it for a few days which is what i normally do and Eventually, I just decided to let it go. And if anything, I would just allow it to be fuel to my fire. Because at the end of the day, this is my journey, Justin's journey, and nobody else gets to dictate whether or not it's a good enough story to be told. I took that as a lesson that I need to stop allowing people's thoughts, opinions, comments, and concerns get the best of me and affect me. And you know, that was just my bad for expecting someone else who's not in my shoes to somehow understand the vision that I see for myself. It won't happen again. So the future for me looks pretty bright. I know it probably seems like what's the difference now? You've been saying the same thing for over a year but I guess if you're interested enough you're just gonna have to wait watch and see. I can at least tell you that I've been doing a very big deep dive into my mental health. I literally fought it for so long thinking that I could somehow regain control myself and I really just had to like let my pride go and realize I'm struggling. I need help. Like I need external people out there to help me. So as many of y'all know, I have recently got a nutritional therapist and that so far has only been two sessions, but I've just learned so much and she's been absolutely amazing. I have also moved to a new state. I'm currently staying with family right now and they are also being amazing. They are being a really good support system for me right now. I'm doing my best to put myself in a place where I can thrive. I had to look at what I could control right now and these are some of the things that I could so that's what I decided to do and that's what I'm going to continue doing.
and I've also taken just some major steps towards my recovery. I'll let you guys know that right now my main focus really isn't to lose weight. That's been the whole centerpiece of my life for, oh my gosh, almost a decade it seems like. I have just been obsessing over my weight for so long and just right now I'm focused on healing. Healing my relationship with food and healing my, my overall self from the inside out versus the outside in. I want I want to be able to say that I love myself and I actually mean that. I want to start being unapologetically me and no longer feeling like I literally have to apologize for my freaking existence. I don't have it all right now. I don't. I wish I did, but you know what? Life doesn't always work like that. But you know what? I can say that even in my darkest and lowest moments that I've had, I never gave up. I'm still here fighting for my life. And I do believe without a shadow of a doubt that eventually I will succeed. This is my story. I'm owning it. And all I got to say is stay tuned and keep on watching. Bye, guys.